have your attention, please. We welcome you to Sacred Heart. It'll be on our fifth Sunday of Lent, and we welcome those on our live streaming. Please remember, as a courtesy, we ask you to silence your electronic devices so that our liturgy won't be disrupted. This is important too, during this construction period, portable bathrooms and bike racks are located at the carport area in the alley behind the church, right next to the prayer garden. Do you like zip lining, swimming, rock climbing? These are some of the activities available at this year's family camp. Call the office for more information. Sacred Heart will be up at Whispering Winds on Father's Day weekend. There will be Stations of the Cross on Friday, 11.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. here in the church. St. Vincent's donation truck is here after all the masses to receive your usable donations. And the Knights of Columbus are out there to help load the truck. Also, small church communities are accepting donations of travel-sized toiletries and hygiene products for St. Joe Day Center for the Homeless. And there are boxes right out there at Mary's Chapel. After this Mass, we enjoin you all to come out back for the groundbreaking ceremony for our new chapel. Tonight is really beautiful. It's a Lenten choral service at 7 p.m. You will be given an opportunity to hear one of the most glorious and rarely performed Mozart's work for orchestra, chorus, and soloists the cantante, Penitent David, based on Italian paraphrase of Italian, of, sorry, of Psalm 51. This work offers an abundance of searing melodies, rich orchestration, and powerful sound of soloists and chorus. An emotional and moving work awaits you in the deepest part of your heart in search of God's mercy and protection. So please come tonight at 7 p.m. Now, last but not least, is a pitch for the annual um, food packaging project. We need volunteers to pack 75,000 meals for Casa de los Pobres and Haiti. That will be Saturday morning, the 11th. There are tables outside near the coffee and donut area where you may um, sign up or get more information. So, my husband and I have done it for a couple of years. It's very rewarding, it's very organized, and you only have to give one hour of your time. It runs like that. And now for um, our liturgy. Our celebrant this morning is our pastor, Father Michael Murphy, assisted by Deacon Griffin. Let us rise and sing together our opening hymn, which you will find in your blue hymnals, number 478, Return to God. That's number 478.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. We gather today a new day to serve our Lord, a God who is merciful and full of compassion. Let us begin our Eucharist by first acknowledging our own sinfulness as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite the children to come forward for our liturgy of the word for children. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick, Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago. Consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert, I make a way. In the wasteland, rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches, for I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people who I formed for myself so they might announce my praise. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have taken, already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession just one thing, 
forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead to continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upcoming calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you do? And they said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger, but they continued to ask him. He straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who has, who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and from now on do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. You just have to love how the Gospel of John spiritually interprets events in the life of Jesus. And we are given such a rich interpretation today that hopefully deepens our understanding of the words and the actions of Jesus, giving us a concrete example of how to live our lives. So today's gospel begins with Jesus going to the Mount of Olives. Now the Mount of Olives was a favorite place for Jesus to go and pray whenever he was visiting Jerusalem. He, we know from the scriptures that Jesus witnesses himself as a man of prayer, always going away to prayer to pray before important events in his life in order to discern the Father's will and direction of his mission. And then John wrote something interesting. Early in the morning, he arrived again 
in the temple area. The time of day is always significant for this evangelist. Now we know morning is the beginning of the day. We have a beautiful morning in Coronado. Beautiful day unfolding before us. But in the Gospel of John, it describes something new is about to happen. A new beginning. The Lord is going to do something that breaks with the customs of the time. So whenever you read in John's Gospel, it was morning, get ready, something's coming. There's going to be a change. And in this case, it is a new expression of God's mercy. Jesus is revealing a new perspective on mercy, something not practiced in the Mosaic Law. Let's take this woman. By all appearances, she is guilty of the sin of adultery. She doesn't even dispute her accusers. She's deserving of the punishment found in the Mosaic Law. Jesus does not reject the Mosaic Law. What Jesus opposes is the use of the law to excuse mob behavior. All of us are sinners. Anyone not a sinner? I'll buy you a plane ticket to Rome and we'll start the canonization process immediately. <laughs> All right? Okay. Many of us also feel guilt for past sins. However, some people try to expunge their guilt by pointing the finger at others, a convenient or defenseless scapegoat. Psychologists call this projection projecting my inadequacies, my sins, upon another to take the focus off of myself. This is not only a tactic of the first century. It happens today. All of us can fall into self-righteousness, taking the focus off ourself and pointing to the evil of others. This happens all across the political spectrum. One group condemning those lawbreakers in the White House. Another group condemning those lawbreakers crossing our southern border. See, we're all doing it, one way or another. Jesus did not question the charges that had been brought against this woman. However, the scribes and Pharisees who brought the woman to Jesus had violated the spirit of the law of Moses which valued repentance over punishment, the spirit of the law. And Jesus tried at this moment to teach these religious leaders the fundamental spirit of the law. After all, he should know on Mount Sinai, he wrote the law with his own finger on the stone tablets for Moses. That was Jesus who did that. That was God who did that. I was thinking as I was reflecting upon this gospel, is it possible that when Jesus bent down to write in the ground, he was using that finger to once again write the law, the commandments, again, for everyone to see? Commandments of love, not retribution. St. Augustine wrote, the Lord both observed justice and did not forego gentleness. Jesus does not ignore sin. Jesus forgives sin. In legalistic terms, this woman was a sinner. She broke the rules. But for Jesus, sin was always seen in a larger context. It must be understood as a spiritual and in, in spiritual and relational terms. Sin alienates us in three ways. It alienates us from God, it alienates us from ourself, and it alienates us from others. That's what sin does. This is why on the, fir on the first Easter night, when Jesus appeared to his apostles, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive will be forgiven, whose sins you retain will be retained. He was given giving the apostles and their successors 
the authority to forgive sins. What we now have as the re sacrament of reconciliation. And the sacrament of reconciliation completely restores our unity to God once again. For instance, when you commit a sin, even before you come into the church, you recognize, oh man, that was a stupid thing to do. And you say to the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry for that sin. And you really mean it? The Lord forgives it immediately. That's the kind of God he is, a God of love. And then when you think about it and say, you know, that was, I, I won't do that again. That's so unlike what I'm called to be as a Christian. I will not do it again. You've just healed the alienation with yourself. And then, when you come to the priest for confession and confess your sin, you heal the alienation from the community. Because no sin is personal. All sin is social. We are the body of Christ. And when you sin, it affects the entire body. And the priest is called in Latin, in persona Christi in capite, in the person of Christ, the head of the body. So when you come to confession and confess your sin to a priest, you are now healing the alienation with the body of Christ. So you don't have to go through, go to everybody and ask for forgiveness. It's done just in the person of the priest. This is a great gift that God has given to us in the sacrament of reconciliation. And this is what Jesus practices with this woman. He forgives her because he's God. When she chooses to change her ways, she is no longer alienated against herself. And Jesus, who is the body himself, speaks for the whole community and forgives her. The sacrament of reconciliation restores the threefold alienation caused by sin. Last weekend, for 24 hours, people streamed into this church for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. From, I, was, I was in the, 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 the Reconciliation Room from 11 p.m. until 6 a.m. It was nonstop, except for about two 15-minute periods. I had a line from 11.30 to 1, 11 to 1.30. The line started up again at 4 in the morning and did not end until 5.15 that afternoon. People coming because they wanted to remove that alienation from God, from themselves and from the community. And they celebrated the sacrament. Jesus said to the mob that had gathered, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Jesus wanted to teach the mob the true meaning of God's law. And this is what the evangelist is teaching us today in the 21st century. The real focus is on God's mercy and forgiveness. That morning in Jerusalem, Jesus opened the door for this woman to a new way of life, a new day in her life. He did not coerce her. He did not threaten her like the crowd that gathered around her. In fact, Jesus said two things to this woman, and he said them specifically in this order. The first thing, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, no, sir, no one. Then Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Jesus first assured her of his love and acceptance of her, and it was not conditioned on her obedience. Then he said to her, go and sin, go and from now on do not sin anymore. Only then did he challenge her to a, to a sin-free life. But first, he acknowledged that he accepted her. It's the same with us. Jesus first says, I love you regardless of our sin. The words of Jesus here destroyed a popular tactic of the evildoer who constantly throws our sin back in our face, instilling morbid guilt over past sins. So the most difficult form of forgiveness is self-forgiveness. If you're like me, 
if you think about that sin long after you've confessed it, how stupid you were, how sad you were that you violated God's law. You see, that's the evildoer throwing that in your face to discourage you. That's not Jesus. When you receive the sacrament of reconciliation, and the words of absolution from the priest who is in persona Christi and Capite, it is over. We read in Psalm 103, as far as the east is from the west, so far does God put your sins away from you. He will never bring it up again. That's the gift that Jesus has given to each one of us. We can forget what went on in the past. St. Paul writes in his letter to the Philippians, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. Now, Paul was a Pharisee. He condemned many who broke the law. He was rigid, pharisaical, judgmental, but that was his old self. What did he write about his old self? I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme goodness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. His old ways were lost to him. A new day had dawned for Paul, a new life in Jesus. He had come to know his true self, and his true self was he was one who was loved and forgiven by Christ. What Jesus taught this woman, what Jesus revealed to St. Paul, what Jesus says to us is this. It does not matter where you have been. What matters to me is where you are going. That's what Jesus says to all of us. It doesn't matter to me where you've been. What matters to me is where you are going. St. Augustine writes, what saving remedy is left for us, except that when we look at some other sinner, we immediately bend down. That is, we humbly observe how we would be cast down by our frail condition if divine benevolence did not keep us from falling. Before we become like Pharisees, remember what we deserve were it not for God's love and mercy. Jesus forgives rather than punishes. Jesus welcomes rather than condemns. Forgiveness is the new way for the sinner to use the gifts given to them to build up the kingdom of God. That's the new way, the new opportunity a sinner is given. As disciples of Jesus, we must continue the example that he set by putting aside retribution and condemnation of others. We must give even the most hardened hearts the chance they need to experience a new life, to experience the dawning of a new day. our elect and candidates who are preparing for the Easter sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist, please come forward at this time for the third scrutiny. Everyone else can please be seated. This is the third scrutiny, and again, it's a reminder of our own sinfulness but it also is a reminder, as we heard in the gospel, of God's great mercy for us, his overwhelming love for us, which we pray for all of us today. So please bow your heads in prayer. Let us pray for these electing candidates for whom God has chosen. May the graces of the sacrament conform them to Christ in his passion and resurrection 
and enable them to experience God's merciful love. That faith may strengthen these candidates against temptations of every kind, including impatience with those they love and judgments of others. that faith may strengthen those candidates against temptations of every kind, including impatience with those they love and judgment of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Hold us in your mercy. Hold us in your mercy. That they may be instruments of your mercy in dealing with coworkers and friends who have different beliefs let us pray to the Lord. Hold us in your mercy. Hold us in your mercy. That they may be able to let go of their past sins and live in the freedom and hope of your mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Hold us in your mercy. Hold us in your mercy that the Holy Spirit would help them discern between right and wrong and give them the words to be life-affirming to all they meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Hold us in your mercy. Hold us in your mercy. Father of life and mercy, you sent your Son to proclaim light, to snatch us from the realm of death, and to lead us to the resurrection. Free these elected candidates from the power of the spirit of evil, so that they may bear witness to their new life in the risen Christ, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, by refusing to condemn the woman caught in adultery, you showed that you came that we might be freed from sin and live in your mercy. Free from the grasp of sin, those who await your life-giving sacrament and deliver them from the spirit of corruption. Through your spirit who gives life, fill them with faith, hope, and charity, that they may live with you always in the glory of your resurrection, for you who are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth two more weeks of your journey, and then this part of your journey to holiness will be complete. We send you with us with our prayers and our blessings and look forward to that day when you can fully share in communion with our church. May God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
While the gifts in the altar are being prepared, let us sing number 681, We Remember. That's number 681.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your spirit, you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, at whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hand. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hand. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Savior, save us from the world. The world for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set us free. 
celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son. And to this saving banquet, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, John, his assistant bishop, with all the clergy, the religious, those consecrated to your service, and all your faithful people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us sing number 730, The Lord Will Heal the Broken Heart. That's number 730.
Let us sing number 782, Only This I Want. That's number 782. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may, be all, we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may have heard that there is a bill working its way through the California legislature trying to to require Catholic priests to reveal the contents of the Sacrament of Reconciliation when it comes particularly to uh, child, child molestation. Uh, just to assure you, regardless of whether or not the bill passes, that no priest will ever reveal the contents of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. We hold that so sacred, so not to worry about that. But to pray for that pharisaical attitude that seems to be present in sacramentals always trying to condemn and point fingers at, at those they, they deem to be sinners. And now it's going to be Catholic priests who do not, who do not reveal the content, contents of reconciliation. So all I can say is if it passes, we may have fewer priests, but there'll be a lot more prison chaplains around. <laughs> so just to assure you that, that, that whatever, the, whatever the law is decided, we find it an unjust law and we will not obey it. We invite you this afternoon or this evening at 7 o'clock to come back to the church for a wonderful Advent choral service with some beautiful music, uplifting music to prepare us for the celebration of Easter. So please join us. And right after Mass, an historic event is taking place in our parish. Right outside the board of the church and over to where the, the, the vacant lot now is, we're going to have our groundbreaking ceremony for the new parish hall and the new chapel. So we hope you'll come over and join us. There is going to be some cake and other refreshments there, and on the cake is going to be a, a, a picture, a, a picture of what the new.
buildings it will look like, what the view will look like from the street. So come on over for a few minutes for the groundbreaking and for some refreshments as we celebrate this historic moment in the history of Sacred Heart Parish. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us end this celebration by singing number 810, Let Justice Roll Like a River. That's number 810.